Good morning and a very warm welcome to you as we gather together for our service again online. We begin our worship today with a call to worship and I read to you from Psalm 95. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us sing for joy to the Lord who protects us. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. For the Lord is a mighty God, a mighty king over all the gods. He rules over the whole earth, from the deepest caves to the highest hills. He rules over the sea which he made, the land also which he himself formed. Come, let us bow down and worship him. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. He is our God. We are the people he cares for, the flock for which he provides. And so we sing together our first hymn in our worship as we sing together, Oh, what shall I do, my Saviour, to praise? Let us pray. And so, Lord, we offer you our praise in our singing, in our being and being present in this moment. We pray, Lord, that as we will read scripture in a few moments, through your spirit, you would help us to reflect on that as we follow our theme of thanksgiving today. So bless us, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds to your word as we read from scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading for today comes again from the Psalms as we read together Psalm 30. A prayer of thanksgiving. I praise you, Lord, because you have saved me and kept my enemies from gloating over me. I cried to you for help, O Lord my God, and you healed me. You kept me from the grave. I was on my way to the depths below, but you restored my life. Sing praise to the Lord, all his faithful people. Remember that the Holy One has done, and give him thanks. His anger lasts only a moment, his goodness for a lifetime. Tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. I felt secure and said to myself, I will never be defeated. You were good to me, Lord. You protected me like the mountain fortress. But then you hid yourself from me, and I was afraid. I called to you, Lord. I begged for your help. What will you gain from my death? What profit from my going to the grave? 
Are dead people able to praise you? Can they proclaim your unfailing goodness? Hear me, Lord, and be merciful. Help me, Lord. You have changed my sadness into a joyful dance. You have taken away my sorrow and surrounded me with joy. So I will not be silent. I will sing praise to you. Lord, you are my God. I will give you thanks forever. May God bless his reading to us today. It was the German Catholic theologian, philosopher and mystic, Meister Eckhart, who said a number of things, but the one statement that has stuck with me is this. If the only prayer that you ever pray in your whole entire life is thank you, then it is enough. We must never neglect or miss the opportunity to say thank you, to give thanks, or to be part of thanksgiving. For today, I want to share a little differently than normal, and not a three-point sermon, but a five-point sermon. No, don't worry, it's not going to be that long. But I want to look at the word thanks and use it as an acrostic where we will take each letter to string together a sense of what thanks is all about. And so the first one is would be the letter T. And T stands for trust. In what is it that we trust? Is it in God and Jesus? Or do we put our trust in our jobs, our pension fund, people, in the laws of the country, or in nature and the laws of science? Often we only trust in what we know. We will trust in our knowledge because we can manage that. We trust in people. We trust in the laws of science that have proved over and over again to be constant. But... Often we trust in things we don't know. So we would trust in our cars, that they will get us to our destination. But we don't really know how a car works. Or we trust in planes when we need to travel long distances. But none of us really know how a plane stays up in the air. But we trust it. We trust others because we know them only until they let us down. Trust is easier for some than it is for others. But throughout scripture, we're reminded to trust and to place our trust in God and in Jesus. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, we read this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Remember that the Lord, remember the Lord in everything you do. And he will show you the right way. Trust begins in Christ. And our thanks begins in trust. Our trust in God. In God the Almighty. In Jesus the Savior. And so our thanks begins in the trust we have in God. Secondly, the H stands for hope. In what is it that we hope? Not what do we hope for, but in what do we hope? Do we hope in the goodness of humanity? Sometimes we see that, but often we don't. Do we hope in our resilience to cope? In South Africa, we know that well. Do we hope in nature? Often when we talk about hope and we say, what do we put our hope in? We default to what we hope for. Where will we get it? And we hope for something. And then when that thing arrives, our hope is gone. And so we need to work out what is it in which we place our hope. What, in what do we place our hope. There are a number of verses in scripture that remind us again, just as we need to trust in 
God, so we also need to put our hope in him. Isaiah chapter 40 reads, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In Jeremiah chapter 29, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope. And a future. Hear yeah, what Psalm 42 verse 11 says. I will put my hope in God. And once again, I will praise him, my Savior and my God. We need to place our hope in God. So having placed our trust and our hope in God. That then leads us to a place of action. And that's what the A in thanks stands for, action. What causes us to act? Well, you might very well say, well, we act in response to things. Well, you're quite right. There's never just an independent action. In fact, there's a scientific principle that says for every action, there is a reaction. But there's always an action before another action. And so action is always a reaction to something. Instinct, thought, the result of training, life experience, the choice that we make. All of those things that lead to actions are there because of an action previous to it. And so, for instance, if I were to throw a ball on the ground and it bounces back, the reaction of the ball is that it leaves my hand and bounces back. But it had to be thrown down. So the action that made it bounce back was first the action of throwing the ball down. But I didn't just throw the ball down. I had to decide to throw the ball down. So my hand caused the action. But it didn't just do that by itself. My mind had to tell my hand to do the action. And so we can keep tracing back that for every action, there was an action that went before it. Some actions are voluntary. Others are involuntary. But there's always something that goes before an action. Actions always also have consequences or results. And those results aren't always necessarily what we want. And so it becomes very important that we think through our actions. And even our thinking is an action before we execute any other action. This is what scripture says in Proverbs chapter 17. An intelligent person aims at wise action, but a fool starts off in many directions. And so we need to think through our actions carefully. So let's just recap. We have placed our trust and our hope in God. And that leads us to action. So because we've placed our trust and hope in God, so our actions then follow. And that brings us to the end in thanks, which stands for new things. It's always nice to get new things. It's always nice to discover new things. We learn new things. We start new adventures. I'm always fascinated by students who get gripped by the discovery of new things. Just this past week, I was talking to my daughter and I was explaining something that I wanted some clarity on. And she said, but Dad, this is so exciting. I really need to look further into this. And I just saw something new had sparked a new avenue, and it's exciting when we discover new things. But because of our actions, and because our actions always have consequences, new things will always be available to us. God promises us not only new things, he promises us new life, filled with new adventures, new discoveries, new learnings. Scripture says in Zephaniah chapter 3, The Lord your God is with you. His power gives you victory. 
the Lord will take delight in you and in his love will give you new life. Thanks leads to new life. And that brings us to the K, which stands for kindness. In this new life that we receive, we've placed our trust and our hope in God. That's led to action and we discover new life. In this new life, we will discover the heart of God. This new thing that God does in us, in our relationship with him, we discover who God is. We discover why God is. And we discover how he can transform us from being who we are into being new beings. In discovering who we are to be better people. There's always newness that comes when it comes to God. And this will become evident as we grow within community. But as we discover the heart of God, we begin to discover what it means to care for one another. The greatest commandment in Scripture is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and spirit and love your neighbor as you love yourself. In that relationship of loving, we discover kindness and compassion. That is the heart of God. And in that kindness, new things always grow and develop. It was Paul in his letter to the Philippians who wrote this in Philippians chapter 2. Your life in Christ makes you strong and his love comf comforts you. You have fellowship with the Spirit and you have kindness and compassion for one another. Thanks will always lead us to a place of kindness and compassion for one another. And so we come to the last letter, and that is the S. The S stands for strength. And when we talk about strength, we're not talking about being able to move heavy stuff. We're not even talking about having the strength to do an extreme sport like run a marathon or ride a cycle race or lift heavy weights. The strength that we're talking about is the strength in the ability to cope. And the ability to help others to cope. It is the strength of character that counts. I think when we look at South Africa, we realize we are a people who are incredibly resilient. But behind that resilience is a deep strength that we cope with so much. And when we've got Christ with us, we can cope with all that the world flings our way. It is in the strength of character and in our kindness and compassion that we're able to help each other be strong. It is in that strength that comes from God and our relationship with him that we can inspire and share strength with those around us. In Colossians, we read these words. May you be made strong with all the strength which comes from his glorious power so that you may be able to endure everything with patience. As I said, our strength is not what we can pick up. Our strength is the ability to endure because we have Christ on our side. And so having placed our trust and our hope in God, and that leads to the, our response and our actions in life. And so Lord, that brings around and brings about new things and new life. And in these new things, we discover kindness and strength. And so in our prayers and in our life, let us never neglect or miss the opportunity to say thanks, to be thankful, to share thankfulness. 
because at the root of thanks is our hope in God and in Jesus. And that gives us strength. Let us pray. And so, Lord, we give you thanks for all that it means and represents. We give you thanks, Lord, for life, life in all its grace. We give you thanks, Lord, for the gift of life, that which we live, for the air that we breathe. We give you thanks, Lord, that you're the creator of life. We give you thanks, Lord, for shared life in community and for those around us. We give you thanks, Lord, for all your blessings. We give you thanks, Lord, that even as we face our corrupt, mixed-up world, we do not face it alone, but you are with us. And so, Lord, we say thank you for who you are and for what you mean to us. We give you thanks for new life that comes in our, the depth of our relationship with you. We give you thanks for the strength you give us to cope. And Lord, may we never miss the opportunity to express our thankfulness to you and to others. And Lord, may that be a witness to our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so join us as we sing together our final song. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. We sing together.
And so I invite you to say together our benediction, the one we would normally sing, but we say it together today. Now and to him who is able to keep, able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And God bless.